Hey there, today we're taking a look at the GMK Tech G1 Mini PC. Now this is an N95 powered mini PC and we are rocking eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM on this system. And we are also rocking a 512 gigabyte SSD. Overall, a really nice configuration for the budget price that this system is at. But if we actually take it out of the box and take a look at it, we can see the actual system itself. Overall, I really like the design of the system itself. It's really small. It's about the size of the Razer Death Adder that I use in terms of just the overall dimensions of it. Overall, everything that comes in the box is pretty much just the power adapter, an HDMI cable, and a VESA mount kit. So really bare bones, but it gives you everything that you need to use the system. But taking a look at the hardware itself, I really like the design of the system. It's really compact with a really sleek design that overall does not scream it is a budget product, though there are certain things about it that I don't like. But in the front, we do get two usb 3.0s and the power button but in the back is where we get all of the io we get the power in we get an hdmi we get the audio out we get a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port we get two more usb 3.0s and we get another hdmi port in general really really nice io and i like that most of it is in the back and that 2.5 gigabit ethernet is a welcome addition but if we actually try to get into the system itself it's actually extremely easy to open up you just take out the four screws in the bottom though keep in mind that it it does sit around these rubber feet so as you're taking out these screws you could potentially lose those rubber feet so keep that in mind and just place them somewhere where you won't lose them but once you take out those screws it's really easy to just pop off the panel and doing so gives you access to the system itself where here we can access the ram slot where we could upgrade these 8 gigabytes to 16 gigabytes if we want we get access to the m.2 here which is actually a pretty decent quality m.2 here and we have an extra m.2 2230 slot so these are the smaller nvme ssds like the, what is used in the steam deck there are a lot more available now so actually having this slot is pretty nice though they are relatively more expensive than just regular sata or normal sized m.2 so keep that in mind in terms of the overall design of the system, I actually am a pretty big fan of it, though I don't like the fact that the top is this glossy plastic that is just very prone to scratches. You're very much going to have to baby this. But I do like the fact that most of the I.O. is going to be in the back. A lot of the time, some of these systems will put some important I.O. in the front, and it kind of ends up making your whole setup look very messy. The vast majority of the important stuff is in the back here, so it's going to be a lot more functional. And of course, the inclusion of 2.5 gigabit Ethernet pretty much means that this system actually has some flexibility on what it can actually serve as. It can actually serve as a really nice server that is really quick to access and to transfer things over to because of it. But jumping into the actual performance of the system itself, and the first thing that we're going to be taking a look at is Cinebench R23. Now, R23 isn't exactly going to be the most accurate in terms of what the performance is going to be like in whatever workload that you have, but it is good for comparing between different pieces of hardware. And the multi-core score that I was getting consistently on here was 2722. Now this was pretty indicative of just some impressive levels of performance. It consistently was performing better than the B-Link system that I took a look at with the N95. Now it was performing better in terms of the multi-core score, but the single core score ended up being pretty much identical for the most part. After multiple runs, it pretty much ended up being one would occasionally get higher single core, the other one would get occasionally higher single core. So it pretty much means that they are identical in terms of single core performance, but it is the multi-core workload that actually puts the GMK Tech G1 ahead of the B-Link Mini S12. Now, this is an interesting result, and I think it also has to do with just the fact that the B-Link just runs hotter in general. The GMK Tech seems to have a better cooling system and in general has a much better noise profile. The B-Link certainly wasn't a loud system, but when you put it right next to this system and they're both running Cinebench R23, the B-Link is far more noticeable. Neither one of them will really disappoint you in terms of noise, but if you're trying to maximize the quietness, the GMK Tech really takes the lead here. In general, though, the level of performance that we're getting out of this is pretty much around Skylake levels of performance. Now, this is to be expected because of the fact that this is pretty much just running on E-Cores, the E-Cores that you will normally find on the higher-end Intel systems that are kind of just there to serve really well in these types of situations where you kind of 
just need to throw as many small cores as you can. Now, in this case, we only have four of them. But if we compare it to something like the i5-6600K that I have, we're looking at about a 20% performance reduction in terms of the multi-core score, but we are also looking at an 80% reduction in power. And this is pretty significant because that means that we are getting most of the performance of the 6600K while using so much less power. We're talking about 110 watts on the 6600K versus just 20 watts on the N95 here. In terms of single core score, we are looking at 915. So that puts it well in line with Skylake's level of performance on the locked CPUs like the i5-6400. And what this overall means is that we're going to be able to get great levels of performance just doing day-to-day -day tasks like web browsing, watching videos. I personally use Firefox and I use the built-in picture-in-picture mode on YouTube all the time. And using that with a 4K video playing while also just browsing on Reddit and just using the internet how I would normally, the level of performance is perfectly adequate and we're barely using any wattage from the wall at all. So if you're in an area with really, really expensive power and you just need a system to be able to just do day-to-day -day tasks without really needing to worry about maximum performance or anything like that, this is more than adequate. This is the kind of system that you can get your family members if they just need a PC and they want something that's really easy to set up, really low power, and is going to require very little maintenance because a lot of the times the biggest source of trouble with PCs is just heat. Heat will eventually damage any kind of hardware. If the fan in the system fails, it's not going to immediately cook itself. Now, obviously, it's still going to to need replacement or it's going to at least need some way of fixing the cooling system in there but trying to cool something that is most of the time going to be using less than 15 watts is going to be a lot better than a system that is chugging down 50 60 to 100 watts just doing day-to-day -day tasks and because it's so quiet you can pretty much just set this up and your family member will not even really think about it too much and with the included vase amount it means that it is really easy to just attach to the back of a tv or a monitor so that you can pretty much have an all-in-one setup that is really going to function a lot better than your smart tv is going to because smart tvs are a disaster they are full of advertisements they are full of apps that a lot of the times barely function or don't even support the apps that you want to use. For example, Roku still does not have a Twitch app. And what that means is that we are put into a position where you just don't have access to a whole service on your TV because of some weird arbitrary thing between Amazon and Roku. If you just hook up a computer to it, there's really nothing they can do to stop you from just watching anything you want on your television, even things that you might have downloaded yourself that aren't necessarily from a streaming service. Or you could even host your own stream streaming service like Plex or Jellyfin. And what having decent levels of performance like this at a really low wattage is the fact that you can actually use this system with a configuration like a Jackery if you're looking to go camping and just keep a system in your RV that will let you actually watch movies or just do any kind of work that you're looking to do if you're the kind of person that is doing van life stuff or you just want a system that can actually run off of some solar panels. This is fantastic for it, whether it is going to be a bright day or a extremely cloudy day where you're barely able to get any kind of wattage. This is going to use so little power that you're still going to remain functional. Now, in terms of gaming, if that's something that you're interested in doing, and this isn't exactly the kind of system that would be great for something like that, but if that is something that you want to do, you're looking at playing mostly games like Stardew Valley, Binding of Isaac, and any kind of 2D games like that, or playing emulated titles that are more from the NES or SNES, or just really light PlayStation 1 or PlayStation two titles titles that really aren't just extremely graphically demanding or anything like that because the hardware that we have here isn't exactly the most powerful but again that's not really the purpose of this system the purpose of this system is to provide you a functional computer that just uses so little wattage that you won't won't really need to think about overall though i have to say i'm a big fan of this little system itself it really is extremely compact it has some decent levels of performance especially for the price point that it's at and it's one of those systems that is cheap enough that you can 
pretty much just gift it to any family members that are still rocking some older processors. I mean, I have families that are still using Core 2 quads. And of course, a lot of them are still rocking Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge. And really, this is going to give you better levels of performance. You're going to be using a lot less power. And of course, we do get that 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, which makes this a viable option as a server. Really, overall, I really like this system, especially at the price point that it reaches. You can pretty much pick up two to three of these systems for the price that most people are going to be spending on a cheap system at Best Buy, where a lot of the times they're trying to sell you cheap systems for four to five to sometimes six hundred dollars, where you can get most of the performance that you want out of something like this and you're not spending it anywhere near that. I mean, this system itself is so compact. It's about the size of the audio interface that I used with it. So if you're on in the market for a system like this, I would definitely recommend that you check out the GMK Tech G1. If you were interested in the B-Link Mini S12, I would recommend checking this one out over it because it does give you better performance and you're not even using more wattage or anything like that. Though out of the box, it is configured to a TDP closer to 20 than the 15 of the B-Link, though the B-Link you can modify all the way up to 25 watts, but really in general, it still just struggles to keep that temperature cool while this one is quieter than the B-Link is at stock. So I definitely recommend giving this one a go. Check it out down below. I will catch you guys in the next one where we're going to be testing this out with emulation. And of course, we are going to be trying it out as a Linux server. So stay tuned for those videos.